it's like when I was studying for it, I had those thoughts. I just got to keep studying. I can't think about it because the yeah. pressure. I was like, oh my gosh, like I've gotten to this point, like to fail one class. Like I can't let mm -hmm. that happen. Or you always yes. feel so behind and there's always so much to do because there's never, it's never done. There's never nothing to do as a graduate student. So just like taking time for yourself, just to like do basic self-care things is like a treat. Because I was burnt out way too early in the semester, I wanted to give it my all. I'm going to do literally everything I can, whether that was losing sleep, losing exercise. Part of why I didn't do well, because it got to a point where I was completely exhausted. I was like pulling all-nighters probably mm -hmm. once a week. Helping others is a calling. It's not a job. Hey guys, my name is Boris. I'm a physician assistant. Today, this is Mimi. She's a first year physician assistant student and she is going to. Um, and yeah, it just, I, yeah, it was a huge, like, oh my gosh. Like I am used to, you know, trying so hard in everything that I do with studying, you know, asking for help and um, all that during undergrad and it worked well for me. But then here in PA school, I think just because, you know, the constant exams, like uh, two, three, four exams every week, um, there wasn't enough time to really look at the material the way that I um, wanted to because I was so behind. Um, and then even like in class, like I have issues with like try like following through with the lecture and paying attention, you know, especially once that <laughs> afternoon hits. <laughs> so, oh yeah. yeah. Like yeah. after lunch. Is oh that, yeah. Was that your like struggle period too? It was after lunch when you're sleepy. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, my I was trying so you... hard. My eyes. <laughs> right. Like you're falling <laughs> asleep because I'm sure every program is like this. Like our program, you're in the same room in yep. the same seat for like eight plus hours a day. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so nothing changes. And like, yeah, there's little five minute breaks between classes, sometimes a little longer, but you're in there like a full time job, like typing away, listening, mm -hmm. lectures, whatever, for like eight or nine hours every single day. Yeah. And man, That's are you sleepy? Did you yeah, have a lunch like undergrad. from 12 I to 1? I think two? so. I mean, one I don't know if it was a, 12 to 1. Yeah. I don't know what time it was, but yeah, I think we did because I think I usually like towards the end of didactic or towards the end of the first semester, I started using that for gym. Mm. And that kind of really rejuvenated me instead of like sitting there eating, continuing to sit in the same seat, studying yeah. more. And then it's just like, it's even worse. I know. Uh, I think so. I, I think we had a lunch break, but I can't remember. Yeah, we have the same thing. I, um, I was consistent sometimes during the week with to the also go to the gym. Uh -huh. But then towards the end of the semester, yeah, end of the semester, I was like, no, nah, like I'm not going. But <laughs> I would leave the class every day because I did not want to be in there during my lunch. Yes. Yes. And that's what I didn't understand is people would just be sitting there. I know. I'm like, I can't. Like you're, how? Like they'd just yeah. be chilling in their same seat studying. Like how How do you have that kind of stamina? Yeah, I definitely you do. Know, know. I got to get I out of it. my little like cave. Yeah. Um, like yeah, in the building? Yeah, like. <laughs> yeah, not in the building. I actually was like walking around trying to like see like the different buildings and where uh -huh. there was a couch. So oh, um nice. like in the visitor center actually. Um mm -hmm. and there's like a nice big couch. So I would always go in there and take a nap and eat my lunch. What you could take a nap? Yeah. With like people walking around you? Yeah. Why not? Oh my god. I don't know. Why? They can steal your phone. Aren't you worried no, they're no, going to steal your phone? Sure, I make sure to like keep it on me. Like, oh no, <laughs> no, yeah. I had my headphones on, and uh, like my phone's right I next see. to me. Like, I would be able to tell if someone. It wasn't like deep sleep. Like, I'd be able to tell if someone. Yeah. Going to sleep. I don't know. If I was your dad, I'd be like, "Don't you dare nap in public with your headphones and your phone. You're going to get robbed or worse." <laughs> No, I'm but not. granted, you're on a college campus. You're not like in the middle of the city. So yeah. still, I don't know. I just I wouldn't fall asleep in front of other people that I don't know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, OK, so back to the point. So you found a lot of success in undergrad by getting extra help, going to office hours, really sitting with the material. And then you get to PA school and you realize I don't got time for any of that. 
Now, that's not to say that you shouldn't still go to office hours and you still shouldn't like take plenty of time with the material, but like just the pace was overwhelming and you couldn't do what you were used to doing. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you fix it? How did you overcome it? Because you are on the other side now. You passed. What did you have to change <laughs> about your study methods? Um. Okay. I think a huge part of it was because I was burnt out way too early in the semester. Mm. And I knew that in the previous video that we did, I talked about how I wanted to give it my all. I'm going to do literally everything I can, whether that was losing sleep, losing exercise. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't like eating much or like feeding myself, you know, like good during the semester. And I feel like that was a huge um, part of why I didn't do well, because it got to a point where I was completely exhausted. Like I was mm -hmm. like, you know, super anxious all the time again. Um, and I couldn't, I couldn't focus. I feel like, yeah, not sleeping. Um, and like, I was like pulling all nighters probably mm -hmm. once a week. Um, which really? is so bad. Yeah. Like, so when you say all nighter, do you actually mean like you just don't go to sleep at all? I, I would like go to sleep. Like I would take like an hour, like an hour to nap. Um, but mainly I would be up the entire, yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Well, well, it was like when I felt like I was doomed for the exam the following morning, that's when I would, um, pull the all nighter for classes sure. or exams that I felt like I'm like, I need every, mm -hmm. everything I can get into my brain from now until the morning. Um, which, which isn't ideal at all <laughs> because yeah. Yeah, I thought in my head, I was like, you know, like, it's better than going to sleep and not getting anything into my brain until the morning of the exam. But then everyone that I, like, all my friends, like, my professors, they're like, you need to get sleep. You need to get sleep. Mm -hmm. And I still didn't listen until <laughs> I, yeah, like, midway through the semester, I was like this, I like was like on a downhill like I couldn't yeah. my grades like every exam I was like remediating exam after exam wow. that's when I knew I was like I need to okay I like I'll try sleeping now so an entire weekend <laughs> I, did not, I did not sleep like I mean no no wait take that back I did sleep sorry you didn't study I didn't sleep. yeah I didn't study and yeah. I all I did was sleep Mm -hmm. An entire weekend, even though I knew I had exams the following um, week. But the thing that I realized was like, wow, like I actually really needed that because I came back and I was like <laughs> happier. I was like rejuvenated. I'm like, wow, what right? is this? Like, this Wait, is, our bodies this is have good. to do this? Yeah, right? It's like, not just optional? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then from there, I prioritize sleep like on the weekends I wouldn't wake up at like 5 a.m and study all the way until like 11 p.m straight sitting in a desk like I would actually mm -hmm. sleep in a little like wake up around nine um and then I would not study all the way until <clears throat> like late evening so I'd give myself breaks um and yeah do do some stuff that I actually like go on a walk even or go to the grocery store like I did not do that the like the entire semester but I was like I, I just need to do little stuff like that like get out like mm -hmm. the entire um weekend I would not see the sun like I would stay in my apartment mm -hmm. which isn't which is not good at all <laughs> so I think literally every grocery God, every grocery, every graduate student, <laughs> literally every graduate student can relate to that. We're just like doing normal, like everyday tasks, like going to the grocery mm -hmm. store, folding your laundry, going on a walk, or like even taking like a 20 minute nap is like heaven. It's just like, just normal everyday stuff that you take for granted living a normal life. Just all right. of that is just like, that's your recreation. Like that's what you just dream about being able to do mm -hmm. because you're yeah. so, you're always so behind or you always yes. feel so behind and there's always so much to do because there's never, it's never done. There's never nothing to do as a graduate student. So just like taking time for yourself, just to like do basic self-care things 
is like a treat. You know, so when you said go to the grocery store, I had to laugh because it's like, yeah, I remember that exact thing. Yeah. You know, and before uh, I actually became a graduate student, my uh, the person I was with at the time, my ex, uh, she was also in grad school. She was in a Ph.D. program. And I remember her saying things like that. Like, yeah, I just went to Wegmans just to walk around for something to do. And I was like, did you need anything? And she goes, no, I just I don't know. I bought lettuce just because I wanted to get out of the house. And I was like, that's so sad. Why are you go do something else that's, you know, more fun? And she's like, no, you don't get it. Like that 10 minutes is all I get. Yeah. And it's, I yeah. That. Now I get it. I totally yeah. get that. <laughs> so, uh, God, it's so sad, but it's like, this is, this is what we're putting ourselves through to get to where we want to go, you know, cause most people wouldn't do that. Right. So good on you for, for sacrificing as much as you had to, you know, as a graduate yeah. student. Thanks. But yeah, yeah, it's it's a struggle, but you're not alone. Again, <laughs> anybody watching this, if you're not in PA school or not yet or whatever, like this is kind of what your life is going to be like. <laughs> Sorry to break it to you. But then also for those of you going through it or those of you worried about it on the other side, it, it's not like that anymore. Yeah, you know? see, that's the thing too. Like I have friends who are able to balance so well. Like they, in school? Take, yeah. Like they yeah. take trips on the weekends or they're able to go out with their friends for dinner, mm -hmm. or enjoy, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it is possible. But for me, I feel like I need all the time that I can get just uh, like my learning style and how mm -hmm. basically like I feel in class. I don't gain much out of it by sitting all day and like absorbing all this new information like. Mm -hmm. It just goes so fast for me. And so I need the time that I can get to break it down and like, you know, take it one step at a time. I also figured out that I was like um, a top down learner because so I was like what Googling. I was like, it's like, you know, like when you're given uh, like a PowerPoint and, uh -huh. you know, you get like the uh, like the like if it was like. Uh, in, in like my me medicine course, if we we're learning about a certain condition or disease and there's the components of it. So like learning about like the pathophys or mm -hmm. the uh, like the treatment diagnosis, stuff like that. Uh, and so in my brain, like I'm not able to kind of like if someone's just telling me this is the treatment, this is the diagnosis these are the labs that you get i'm not able to put it together if that makes sense so a top-down learner you need to know like the why behind it first so like you need to know the mechanisms of like the drugs you need to know how the um like how the physiology works in the disease mm -hmm. process and so i need to learn all that first before i can put it together with like the treatment like even the treatment i have to be like why? Like why? Why are we doing this? Um, oh. Really help. I know that like yeah. that's not ideal because of like the time that we have. You know, it's so limited. So mm -hmm. I'm cramming a lot of time. But if I don't do that, or at least a little bit, then it won't get into my head. Mm. So I yeah, I started using like ChatGPT a little bit to uh, kind of help me understand briefly what all those mean which was really mm -hmm. helpful. But yeah, I figured that out. Um, Cause I've tried doing that without like really understanding what I'm studying like the night mm -hmm. before. But like when I'm on the exam, I'm like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> yeah. Cause the exams are all practical. It's all like, here's the yeah. condition and you're supposed to just know the little algorithm to go through and then boom, that's the answer. Uh, yeah. you're more of like a global kind of, I could write an essay on this whole thing, but I can't exactly, you know, it sounds like you might fare better in medical school oh, than in PA. I don't know about that. Well, cause they learn things very holistic, not holistically, I guess, like they learn everything about it. You know, mm -hmm. the mechanism of the drug down to the molecule, the molecular level, the physiology down to whatever, you know, happens in the human body like things that we just don't have time for in PA school. Mm -hmm. We might cover it very, very, very briefly. And then boom, give me the practical aspect and move on. In med school, they learned like the whole picture. 
Um, and they actually, that's why they have more time because they like the topics they cover are very similar to ours. They just go further in depth, mm-hmm. you know, so that's why yeah. they have the two years instead of the one. And yeah. then obviously like in clinical and residency, they go even mm-hmm. deeper and whatnot. So it sounds like you might actually fare better in that kind of environment. Whereas PA is much more practical, much more bare bones and just like, give me all yeah. the topics surface level. Uh, so yeah, I, I found I was a little bit like that too. Mm-hmm. And then I just realized I didn't have time for it. So I just kind of yeah. accepted that I'm just not going to learn as much about this as I want. And that's why I tell PA students who put a lot more pressure on themselves than they really need to, uh, for good reason. It, you know, it's, it's, it's very admirable that you want to know more than they're teaching you and you want to like learn more about this, but practically you just don't have time. So that's why I tell PA students, learn what you need for the exam, not anymore, and move on. You'll learn everything you want to down the line while you're practicing. Yeah. Yeah, And then I like down my uh, end of, towards the end of my semester, I realized that. And then Mm -hmm. I think my issue sometimes on the exam is I don't remember like I remember studying it, but I can't exactly pinpoint what it was or like what it was trying to get at. So I started mm-hmm. trying to um, like come up with m- mnemonics for everything or like some mm-hmm. sort of um, association with all the like the important bolded stuff that are in my PowerPoints. Mm-hmm. Every little thing I tried to come up with as much as I can. And I think that also helped if I needed to like cram a lot before the, mm-hmm. before the um, exam, like the night before. So yeah, that's another thing that I did that I felt. The mnemonics? Was helpful. Mm-hmm. Like, like mnemonics. Or, mnemonic. Yeah. Or like yeah. silly stories, like dumb <laughs> stories. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, whatever yeah. helps get it into your brain, just temporarily, yeah. you know, you're, right. you're not going to remember the dumb story or the mnemonic for the rest of your life. Probably. It's mm-hmm. just enough to get it into your brain and just like get it on the paper and then move on. And yeah. then if you happen to have to use those drugs or whatever, you'll learn them. Trust me. Yeah, there's one. So I have a couple that come to mind that I actually do remember. Share, share. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, hold on, let me think of it. It's like a really like catchy thing. Uh, okay, it's gallbladder gallbladder on the wall no it's murphy murphy <laughs> murphy murphy on the wall gallbladder oh, gallbladder on the wall. yeah <laughs> so there's oh, that God. and then my professor i would all i will always always remember this like luke leukoplakia no scrapia oh yeah that yeah. makes sense yeah stuff like As that opposed, oh i see what you're doing because so like one kind of study hack for a PA, especially when you get to the pants, when you like know all this stuff already, is studying diseases that could be mistaken for one another. You know, so like leukoplakia, no scrapia, it's like when it's, uh, how the hell did I still remember this? But it's when something's like precancerous, it's a lesion growing from the tongue, not on the tongue. And it's it looks a lot like a uh, thrush, which you can scrape off and it's friable, it bleeds a little bit, it's very itchy. And leukoplakia is not, you can't scrape it off. So that's why they make you do that. So you can differentiate the two. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Yep. So that, that makes sense. Cause if you like, if like a presentation comes in and it's like a vignette and it's like uh, the patient has a thick white coating on their tongue and it can be scraped off automatically, you know, it's not leukoplakia because you can't scrape off leukoplakia. So that's why they make you memorize silly shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Those but, stick with me a little, a few, a few, uh, stick with me. The rest I do not remember. But yep. <laughs> what's uh? I don't know if it's worse, but what's another thing that's similar to leukoplakia that's kind of in that same ballpark? Mm, there's one. I just can't remember at the top of my head. Erythroplakia. A bunch of bunch of times. I can't remember. I it's erythroplakia. I can't remember if like leukoplakia can turn into that or if erythroplakia yeah. is better or worse. I can't remember. I can't uh, remember. But they're all precancerous. Mm. Yeah. There's one for, um, uh, I think, amyloidosis and amyloidosis. associated with um, like 
apple green by Fringence Congo Red or something. Oh, I don't remember that. that. Used, <laughs> yeah, that's the one that my oncology professor was like, you need to remember this. It's a buzzword or something. Which but, one was the buzzword? Like the Congo Red by Fringence Apple something that you'll that's associated with um, amyloidosis. That doesn't even ring a bell for me. I don't know if we ever learned that. Or if we oh. did, I can't remember. Yeah. But yeah. She said, remember it. You've got to remember it. She said like 10 times. So that's repetition. Yeah. yeah that's mm -hmm. one of those where I'm like, okay, I won't forget Yeah, I this. love how they have like the, you need to know this on every slide. Like they literally tell you yes. and then people still get that wrong. Yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, me too. It's just like, it's like, oh man, like, like if I'm going back after an exam, and then I look on the slides and it's like, this wasn't in there. I don't know why they asked that. And then it's literally in bold, in red, you need to know this. And it's like, how did I miss this? I know. I'm like, oh so, my God, really? It happens. It, it, you just, you're human. You know, there, there's limits. You can't just learn everything. Uh, we got so off topic. What were we even talking about? Um. Yeah. What were we talking about? I don't know. But oh, it sounds like, like, ways, like study ways that. Mm -hmm. I did in the semester to get through. It past. sounds like you were kind of overwhelmed. Like you yes. didn't know what to, to do as far as study methods. And then you just like kept losing more and more sleep and you gave up exercise and everything else. Mm -hmm. And then it, something hit when you kind of like got to your limit and you realized this isn't sustainable. And then you started getting more practical, you know, like you probably before that you probably thought like, Oh yeah, I don't want to just make acronyms and like, stories and stuff because I'm not going to remember them. That's not optimal. And then you realize like, no, I have to do these little shortcuts because I just have to pass this test. Yep. You were a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I listened a lot. Uh, like for uh, my exam, I, wait, what were we talking about? <laughs> uh, we were talking about how you kind of got in your own way by not doing practical things oh, to oh, learn yeah, the material. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, I wasted a lot of time uh, when I was studying, especially mm -hmm. if it's like a last minute, I need to get everything into my brain because I know absolutely mm -hmm. nothing for tomorrow. Yes. So let's say I got home like at like five. Mm -hmm. And so I'd start maybe like five, five thirty. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I would go, I'm like, okay, I have this amount of hours. And then as the time would go on, I was like getting nowhere mm -hmm. because I was so like paranoid that I wasn't going to know it all. And I would focus so much on one subject and would get stuck on it when I didn't know. Yeah. So another thing is trying to go through each uh, lecture um, like a little bit from each. Mm -hmm. Instead, I would focus like a, like three hours on one and mm. I was like I can't do this because oh. you know what I mean yeah. and then I would leave out the rest or would briefly go over it and then not remember mm. it for the exam so that was another so issue of mine you could call it getting in your way get it getting in your own way it almost seems like okay I'm not trying to psychoanalyze you because that's not my specialty and I'm not a psychiatrist and I don't work in psych but <laughs> I don't know, human behaviors are just interesting, especially when it comes to these like important high pressure situations. And it sounds like you were almost, it's like a defense mechanism. Like I have five things to learn. Let's say one is ophthalmology. Let's say one's ENT, one is this, one is that. Let me just focus all my time on ophthalmology because now I'm comfortable here. And also if I have to read this slide, you know, eight times, then it means I don't have to do something new four times because now I don't have time for it. And like doing something new is harder. It takes more energy. So it's this like, it's weird to call it lazy because you're working your butt off and you're, you're still working, but it's lazy. It's like intellectually mm -hmm. lazy because you don't want to switch gears. You don't want to do something new. Think of something a new way because that's, that's effort. That's hard. So I'd rather like sit here in this thing that I'm already a little bit comfortable with instead of switching yes. gears and doing something new. So yeah. it's honestly, it's a little bit of a, a type of laziness that I would call it. Yeah, it's inefficient, like yeah. very inefficient. Very inefficient, getting in your own way. And I would call it, you know, laziness because you'd like, it does take effort to switch gears and do something different. And I'm yeah. only saying this because I, I did the same thing. I'm not beating up on you. 
but yeah, it's, if you're studying and you feel like you're getting nowhere, kind of zoom out for a second. You know, that gut feeling that like I'm running out of time. Think yeah. about what's actually happening. How long have I spent on this topic? Okay. Am I doing this because I'm avoiding new topics? I have right. to do the new topics. Let me take a quick walk around the block. 10 minutes. When I come back, I'm doing the new topic. I don't care if I feel like I finished the first topic. We're moving yeah. on. We have to. Yeah, that's you know? exactly yeah how I feel. Like I would... Yeah focus so much on a topic because I w- did not want to like start a new mm-hmm. topic that I like was not interested in but I did get that too I got my my chicken timer oh my god <laughs> is that chicken little um that sure cartoon, right I think sure. so it came with it came with four <laughs> timers there's like a frog a cow a pig on Amazon it was like a pack of four I use the cow I like cows they're cute yeah, I so gave it to my friends, um, the other ones that I didn't need. But yeah, it's just a, like a 90 minute timer or you, it can go up to 90 minutes. So I would mm-hmm. try to use it as much as I can. And then once the timer was up, I was like, I need to move on. Wait, hang on. OK, so I think you just explained it, but I want to like concisely explain that because that's a very important shortcut that you just did. So. Mm-hmm. What did you do with this timer exactly to help you study? I would like break up the like the PowerPoint. So I would say, okay, I'm going to give myself this much of time. Mm-hmm. And even if I didn't like learn everything I needed to or wanted to, I just have to yeah. move on and then go through all of them and then come back mm. and then spend another portion of time trying to like say it out loud or write it over mm-hmm. um, like as if I'm like teaching someone. So that's another thing oh, that I do, you know, yeah. like, or if it's like one hour, let's say I'm doing an hour of PowerPoint one, I'd set mm-hmm. like 40, 40, 45 minutes to learning the material. And then the mm-hmm. next timer for 15 minutes would be, okay, what do I know about it? Like, can you, can I say it out loud? What? Uh, you know, like yeah. what can I think about it from my head and not use my notes, stuff like that. You can do that. And you can literally even like write out questions. So like during like the learning block, you can write out yeah. questions, like especially for those bolded points where they literally say you need to know this, or it's right. like important because it came first. It's on some of the first PowerPoint slides. I could literally like write a question about it, not answer it, but just write a question. And then in those 15 minutes, when you have to teach someone, it's like answer your questions. Yeah, that's yeah, that's really helpful too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did a and little. Can you bit show the timer that. again? Can, can I see that chicken <laughs> yeah. timer? There we go. So the reason Mimi got this timer on Amazon for like probably six dollars or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, use your student loans, guys. You can afford a chicken timer. I promise. If not, email me. I'll buy you a chicken timer. And the reason she got this thing is because she found that she was like spending too much time on one topic in order to avoid studying a different topic. Uh, just because mm-hmm. it was comfortable. And so yep. what she did to combat that was she got this timer. And once the chicken timer goes off, she's done with that topic. Even if she doesn't feel like she's completely like learned it, she's got to move on. And then she uses her cow timer for the next topic. <laughs> it's so not. loud it's, it's too. It scares, it jump scares me. Like it's, it's that like, loud. <laughs> like we really hear it. loud. Yeah. Hold on. Let me set it for like a minute. Good. Yeah. It's going to bring back like PTSD. Oh yeah. Okay, it will be. Oh man, that is loud. Okay, well, don't even look at it. Let it surprise you, so it's genuine. Okay. <laughs> and it's in my AirPods too, so it's going to be loud. But anyway, so yeah, I feel like a lot of people who are struggling for whatever reason, it's not that they're not smart enough, guys. If you made it in, you're smart enough. It's kind of that they're not organized in some specific way. You know, there's some flaw that people who end up failing they don't realize the flaw. They don't want to. Uh, Mimi realized her flaw and she overcame it with a very funny little mechanism with a chicken timer and boom, now she did better. So if you're like in this negative spiral and you feel like just nothing you do is enough and you're losing sleep and you're still not doing well, take like an objective thousand foot view of what is happening when you study. Are you getting stuck on one topic to avoid studying another topic? Are you trying to learn too much and you're using that as an excuse to not learn other things? You know, those are very common sticking points, especially for people who just 
There it is. There, there, there she goes. The chicken's telling me to shut up. Yeah. But yeah, that's a very common sticking point. It's not that you're not working. It's that you're not working efficiently and you're not doing what you have to. Maybe for an ideological thing, like I need to learn even more about this. I don't feel like I know enough. Sorry, buddy. Move on. You got to learn more. You know, you got to learn other topics. So Another yeah, good on you for realizing thing. that that I realized was mm -hmm. if I had like, it was my weekend and I had, th I knew I had three exams the following week. I would spend a really long time on one class. So I try mm -hmm. to like break it up throughout the day and give myself like the first part of the day to do this class and then mm -hmm. the afternoon and then the evening. So I tried that, which is sort of helpful sort of not. Mm -hmm. Since when I get focused, I want to be focused in that entirely and get through it, which is also part of the problem, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In practice, you can't do that. So maybe this is uh, everything kind of happens for a reason. You know, anytime you have a real struggle, you can let it take you and let it just take you out. And boom, you'll never grow and never learn that lesson. This may have been Mimi learning her lesson the hard way that she really needs to get out of focusing on one thing and blocking out everything else and be able to switch gears. Because when you're practicing, if you can't do that, like depending on what office you work at or what specialty you're in, you can get someone killed. Mm. You know, if you're so focused on Mrs. Jones's cholesterol and then your nurse is like, Hey, um, there's this lady who's 95. We haven't seen her yet, but her oxygen's really low. And you just go, yeah, yeah, I can't focus on that right now. That lady might be in trouble. You know, that's a really good point. So being able to switch gears and switch topics quickly, you know, and being able to give your all to each topic that you switch on, that might be what this is teaching you. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, for sure. Even in like a dermatology office, like you're you're like chilling. You're like, yeah, I can totally geek out on dermatology and just <laughs> really get into the nitty gritty, and that's what I like to do. And then your nurse still tells you, hey, by the way, this lady's here for a mole, but she's 89 and her oxygen's 88, and she looks a little bit blue. You can't just be like. Yeah, but I'm too busy focusing on the small. Um, I'll get to her. Like, no, no, no. You're going now. Oxygen 911. Mm -hmm. Listen to her. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, like, yeah. I don't know if this is a little too abstract, but it seems like that might be a weakness of yours that yeah. you've conquered by getting that timer. Mm -hmm. You know, getting that killer instinct, getting that fight or flight in you when something has to change. Yeah. Still working so, on it. You know, sometimes I don't always want to use the chicken timer, even though it's right in front of me. But, you know, I don't blame you because the chicken timer is really annoying. I hate that noise. But I think that's actually doing good things for you. Yeah. You know, knowing that, like, okay, mm -hmm. I have to change gears now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like people. programming. Yeah. It's like programming in ADHD. Mm hmm Which is good because you have to have ADHD for, uh, for medicine because things yeah. are always changing and people are constantly coming to you with random stuff. And you, you have to take care of it because you're... You know, if you're like, if there's MDs working in the same office, you're not the top of the food chain, but you're dang close to it. If you're a solo provider, like an urgent care or primary care, like I was, like you are the top of the food chain. Everything comes to you. Mm. You know, in medicine, everything rolls uphill, not downhill. Right. So like everything from front desk issues to somebody on the phone about lab results to something happening with a patient to literally a, a medical emergency, it's literally all you at the same time. And you have to be able to switch gears, reprioritize really, really quick. So that's kind of what you're learning to do at, at like a different level. Yep. So good on you. Exactly. You're learning it. Let that chicken timer really just get that adrenaline pumping whenever uh, whenever you have to switch topics. Yeah. 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 Didn't expect that today, huh? <laughs> cool. Okay. Tell me about how, so like the last video we did, you were talking about how exercising and making sure you take some time to walk on the treadmill and all of that was really good. And it sounds like you kind of let a lot of that go. Mm -hmm. And then when you got back to it, you realized how important it was. Yep. Tell me about that. Yeah, I, I got to a point, like I mentioned, you know, I was so burnt out and with like exhausted. I didn't feel like myself anymore. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I can't even explain it. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. And so I didn't do any of that, like stopped working out, um, didn't 
uh, eat like nutritiously as I should or would eat less. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, not sleeping, all these things would literally have piles of laundry. <laughs> oh no. I know. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was rough, but yeah. And then it took me to the point where I was like at like my literal breaking point mm-hmm. because I was just, I was like crying every day and I was, I felt miserable. Like it got to a point where I would dread waking up and walking to class, sitting in class. Mm-hmm. And then I was just so overstimulated by the classroom you know, because Mm -hmm. of all the noise and then having to be aware and focused for the lectures all throughout the day. Mm -hmm. I think it got to me too much um, because I was not sleeping, not doing any of those things to help my health out that, yeah, I, that's where I noticed, especially with my grades, my exams, not, I was like remediating, remediating all these things. Mm-hmm. And so I listened finally to the people that told me to sleep and try to exercise, do a little bit of this and that. And that's when I was like, okay, like this is something that I really need to, like no matter how hard it is, I need to do something, like, even if it's just a little bit of going outside and going on a walk Mm -hmm. for like 10 minutes like I have to do that and it actually Mm -hmm. really helps like the process of getting yourself to go outside is hard but once you do and you come back in it's like you feel a little bit better and able to like sit down and study and continue that yeah it's like you need to have a (laughs) non-negotiable like no matter no matter how much I still have left to do, I'm not getting less than pick a number, five hours of sleep, let's say four hours of sleep, uh, whatever it is for you that you just need to actually function because at at one point it's diminishing returns, you know? So I think in post-bac for me, it was five hours and during, during finals week, it was four hours, but that's only just like a limited time. So if you're finding that you're doing less than that, especially consistently, you gotta just, just take a step back. Yeah, that was me like every week when we had three exams back to back, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, mm-hmm. I would not sleep from Sunday to whatever the last day of the exam was. Wow, at all? So my, well, like, you know, anywhere from one to three hours. So non-negotiables, like how much you want to sleep, uh, there's got to be some. And so you found that like you didn't have those limits, those boundaries with yourself. You just kept getting less sleep and less sleep and never going outside. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it was just like a very quick downward spiral. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. If you're if you're noticing that you're in that pattern, maybe whoever's watching this is early in that pattern where you just know in the back of your head, I'm not sleeping enough. And obviously, like just to survive in school, you have to be beyond that a little bit. But if it's getting to be unacceptable for you and you're realizing you're getting more and more tired every day, one, you might need just a hard reset like Mimi had where she just one whole weekend, she didn't study at all, you know, and then she felt way better and whatnot. Or you might need like a half reset, like one half of a day. I'm going to sleep in. I'm going to not set my stupid chicken alarm to wake up. I'm going to just, I'm going to sleep half the day. And then I'm going to cook myself a really good meal or go out for a really good meal. And I'm going to walk around the block. Mm-hmm. or go to the park and then at four o'clock from four to ten it's go time baby let's go i'm refreshed uh and then the mm-hmm. same thing the next day on sunday you know you might need to do it that way halfway but you you do need some sort of a reset if you're feeling that way right i didn't think my lack of sleep was harmful because mm-hmm. i was like going through and i was like like this is normal like i need to do what i need yep. to do to pass mm-hmm. i think it was more of like the mental health aspect of it. Like I noticed Mm -hmm. I was having trouble like getting out of bed even and like going to school, putting on clothes, getting dressed. (laughs) No, literally like I was like, Oh, he goes to school with like one sock on and then like (laughs) everything's like mismatched. Yeah. Which is basic functions of like Mm -hmm. being a human. You just like start to lose. Yeah. No, for real though. I, that's when I know myself and I know that when I feel like that, 
I feel mm-hmm. miserable and I'm like, yes. I don't want to do it. Like the amount of energy it takes to even get from my bed to my desk mm-hmm. was so hard. Like I was just, Oh my God. I would, say, I would say like, okay, I wake up and I would like, you know, eat my breakfast or whatever. And then I would get started studying, but mm-hmm. I was in bed and I would set, give myself an hour to just lay there, like take a nap and then mm-hmm. when the time comes, I'm like, oh, nah, another hour. And then uh, another <laughs> hour. So then it would repeat yep. until I was finally like, oh, I need to get up. And then I would sit down yep. and study. And then once I got started, it was fine. But yep. yeah, yeah sleep, as impo- sleep is as important as food and water. Like your body's going to take it eventually. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's you got to sleep at least a little bit. For everybody, it's different. You probably need less than you think you do. If you think you need like nine hours, you know, you could probably do okay on seven. If you think you need seven or eight, you could probably do okay on five temporarily. Yeah. But it was man. crazy because when I went from, you know, like one hour, two hours, three hours, mm-hmm. maybe, and then I would add, or like when I would get like four or five hours, I was like, wow, mm-hmm. that is I good. I feel so me. much better. Yeah, four right? or five hours is nice. <laughs> yep. Four or five is like, I think, the bare minimum temporarily to function. I think mm-hmm. you can function long term on like five or six for months yeah. at a time. That you can do. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone's different. But anyway, okay. So sleep's important. So yeah. This, uh, I don't think this interview was super, like, I guess, linear. I don't think we did like we are doing this topic and now we are doing that topic and now we are doing that topic. I think we kind of like mixed everything up. But now looking at my little list of topics, I think we covered everything, right? Yeah. Just as a recap. Scattered, like, yeah. I think so. But I think some people like scattered more than like organized. It just, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It feels more I am human. very scattered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's okay. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I remember when I was traveling to Raleigh, actually, to look at the house. My friend that I was traveling with had like this podcast that she would always listen to. And they would talk about like five things at the same time. And it's like, she's like, oh, you should listen to this with me. You'd be interested in in it. And then like the first topic, I was like, yeah, this is sweet. And then without warning, they would switch to a different topic. And then like 10 minutes yeah. later, they'd get back to the first one. And it really angered me because like, I really would prefer things to be more linear. Yeah. Uh, but sure enough, now we recorded one of those podcasts. So if anybody else is very logical and linear like me, I'm sorry. But when you're just in like a normal conversation, it just doesn't work that way. Yeah. So sorry, y'all. Uh, those of you that appreciate this style of content, you know, maybe, maybe appreciate it. But anyway, uh, so the topics that we covered, I think, were <laughs> Mimi almost failed out of this semester in PA school. And then I uh, just wanted to offer some hope for those of you that are in a similar situation. She overcame it by doing the things that we discussed, getting a timer, not focusing too much on one topic, uh, getting a little bit of sleep, that kind of situation. It actually ended up where she was not sleeping almost at all. She wasn't exercising, socializing, and realized how important those things were. Took a whole weekend off, came back refreshed, and now she passed the semester. Uh, And then for farm specifically was the biggest issue and how she studied was making acronyms, making funny stories about things, and somehow it just worked out. Yep. Anything else you want to add to all that? Um, yeah, I would just say like it's okay if you're feeling this way, you feel alone mm-hmm. in it. Cause I definitely did, even though I knew like everyone around me, like my peers felt the same way as mm-hmm. well about um PA school and getting through it. And I would say just reach out and ask for help, like whether it's like telling a friend about how you're feeling, ranting mm-hmm. to them. Um, and I realized like, that's one of the most important things too, is the people that you're in class with are the most, the most, like you can talk to your family, you can talk to them about how hard it is, but it's the people that are actually going through it and understand how, um, and what PA school is, you know, Mm -hmm. all going through it together that, that really reassured me um, since I thought I was alone. But when I was talking to my 
friends about it um, and stuff, like they are thinking the exact same thing. They're like, I don't know if this is for me anymore. I was yeah, like, yeah, right. I differently, you know. Was, and uh, like, yeah, I feel was it ever someone? Was it ever someone who you felt like was like holding it all together, and you thought that they were totally fine, and like they made it look like they weren't struggling, and then you talk yeah. to them, and you realize like they're struggling as hard as you are. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't that reassuring? Yeah. It's very reassuring. Yeah, for sure. Um, and not just students, but also like talk to like your professors about it. I mm -hmm. think I'm. I like ever since in undergrad, like I've always like talked to my professors about how, you know, if mm -hmm. I was struggling in the, the, their class or struggling with myself, uh, just to open up to them and uh, tell them. So like I was really close with my advisor advisor this semester and uh, told her uh, exactly how I felt. And so she helped me through that um, and got, you know, like the program director involved and just just so they can, you know, hear a little bit about what's going on, like academically, personally, all that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's also re really reassuring as well, you know, because they've all been through it and they know how hard it is um, to be a PA student. So, yeah, that's, I think that's the biggest takeaway is it's gonna be a really hard process and you might be used to getting really good grades in undergrad and it's it's definitely humbled me it's it, yeah in every way like um you just have to kind of accept it and you have to realize that you know like you got here like you got in this spot out of thousands of applications so you are more than capable of getting through it you just have to kind of figure out what's like why be aware of you know, where do you think you're uh, going wrong? And then be open to talking about it. Um, and I even, you know, I used to have like a therapist consistently uh, all through undergrad, but then when I moved, I had to like find a new one. So I kind of like stopped mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So I um, reach out to like my school um, and their like counseling services. So mm -hmm. got started with that. Um, and sometimes, yeah, it's nice to just talk to someone who does not, like, does not know you, you know, mm -hmm. uh, know none about your life, except you can just vent to them about it, mm -hmm. and then they're listening to you. So that's also really, like, something that, um, you know, if you're struggling, I feel like therapy is really good to kind of just vent and express mm -hmm. how you that's, feel uh, that's something that i don't think anyone's ever given like advice about as far as like you know pre-pa or pa student advice talk to a therapist you know and it's probably going to be free like every school has mm -hmm. counseling yeah. services and you can get established with them pretty quick it's not like on the outside where it's like a six-month waiting period to find someone like no schools yeah, it, have was, them. Mm -hmm. it was really Literally. fast too like I yeah. talked to someone like two days later, they're like, here's the website. You go in, log in, mm -hmm. make an appointment. And then I saw them like the same yep. week. Ours was literally just like this little building that just mm -hmm. looked like a house. So I never thought about going in. And then so like when you're pushed to the limit, grad school will push you to the limit. I don't care who you are. Yeah. When you're pushed to the limit, I'm not saying like those there's psychological issues or whatever, but things do come up. You know, stuff that you might have been running away from or hiding or stuff that you didn't know was there. When you're pushed to the limit, that stuff comes out. And it doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It just means like you really do need a little bit of help in that department, even if it's one session or even if it's yeah. like every week or even if it's every six months, who knows? But like, talk to someone. It's okay. Mm -hmm. You might actually see some of your classmates there, which might surprise yeah. you. So, yeah. Like I thought I was the only one, but I had like a couple of sessions with one of the counselors at the counseling session, uh, the counseling place. I can't remember which semester, but like things just really got to a head. And then sure enough, in the waiting room, I see two of my classmates and it's like, oh yeah, okay, not the only one. Yeah. This is hard. Yeah, right. This is driving everybody crazy, literally. Uh -huh. so, yeah, you should do it. You know, if, you, yeah. if you're struggling, even if you think you're like struggling five out of 10, you still, you could probably use some help. So yeah. Oh yeah. For sure.
Do it. Yeah. No, no shame I know it's like scary. Sorry, I was just going to say, like, I know it's mm -hmm. scary to, like, ask for help. It, not in even, like, the most, like, you're doing super bad, but even if it's just a mm -hmm. little bit that you feel like you're struggling in or you could be better in, uh, whether mm -hmm. it's one of your classes or even just, you know, wanting, feeling so stressed, overwhelmed, because those, it's, like, chronic, like, overwhelmed mm -hmm. stress every day, you know, because it's, like, finals mm -hmm. week every uh, week, so... Um, I know, like I've been there. I've, I was the type <laughs> of person where I didn't want, I was like, I'm strong. Like, I don't need help. Mm -hmm. You know, like I was very like defensive and holding everything in, but it took me to reach um, my breaking point, like even just feeling anxious all the time. And then once I did, I realized how helpful it is because they're like all my faculty members even like they care so much about uh the students and they want to help mm -hmm. you and so i feel like that is with um uh every every program you know like they're there to help you and like when you're struggling so talk to them and then come up with a plan but it is okay like it doesn't feel like it but you'll realize that it is much helpful than not and not saying anything or or like struggling it by yourself mm -hmm. yeah yeah and if for whatever reason you think it makes you look weak or incapable to talk to your program people or people in your class you know a counselor can't talk to anybody there's a mm -hmm. like a therapist client whatever yeah. it, it, it may be so yeah like that's it's all confidential somebody sees you in the waiting room okay they know you're talking to someone but that's all they know so for whatever reason, you're not comfortable talking to your faculty, your classmates, you can always talk to somebody at the counseling center. Yep. Yeah, 100%. But yeah, that's a good tip. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, yeah, so you're done with your first year or your first semester? I'm done. This is my second semester. So I start summer semester tomorrow. Uh, oh, man. Okay. <clears throat> cool. So yeah, you're now I'm done with two semesters. Though. Yeah, yeah, done with two semesters. Everyone's saying it's going to be a little bit better, and there are less exams. Nice. We have 31 this semester. Now we have 26 left of didactic. That's like five less. That's a lot. I know. Like I'm hopeful. Nice. Yep. Yeah. We have now eight classes, this. but um, mm -hmm. no, it's like exciting. Uh, classes too because I think we've every semester it's like anatomy physiology like right right oncology but now it's like getting into the specific classes like OB mm -hmm. uh, yep. surgery emergency like all those so they'll be really and they're getting you ready for rotations is what they're doing right yeah that's what oh, those are oh I don't want to think about that no no that's you do scary. that's what you're there for yeah I it's know, more fun. Yeah, I know. I know now I'm you got all the boring basics out of the way and now it's like yeah. no like practically this is what you get mm -hmm. to do now you know, on OB, you better know this, this, and that. On pediatrics, you better know the vaccine schedule and all that stuff. Right. It's like it's stuff that you'll actually be doing. Yeah, which I think it's going to yeah. be really fun to learn. And then practice it really is. Like, like real skills, too, because I've heard mm -hmm. there's a lot more of that in the summer. Yeah. Yeah, if your program set up like mine was, which is like one year of didactic, that's literally mm -hmm. what it is. It's a lot of very practical, all very fast-paced, but it's all very practical stuff. Yeah. Uh, so it's not as much like deep theory and like crazy overwhelming information. It's like, no, this simple thing, this simple thing, and that simple thing, and then we move on. And it's just like, it's a lot of simple stuff. So the pace is the same, but it's just, it's much more easy, I feel like. Mm. So yeah, no, you, you got this. You totally got this. And it's like, it is like you said, more fun. Because when they tell you about like, okay, perfect example, like OB or whatever, they'll tell you, you know, these are the things that you'll probably see. This is what you need to know not all this other junk, you know, this is, by the way, here's like stories from my own practice that the professors are going to be telling you. So it is a lot less like I'm a student and I'm being put upon and beat upon. And now it's just like, I'm being treated more like a colleague, like, Hey, learn this, this, and that, and you'll be good on your rotation. Go, you know? So it, it, it's better. Trust me. The, the, the vibe is better in the semester. Okay. Yeah. It's and fun. it's summer too. It won't be dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So get some vitamin D. 
Yes, it will be Get nice. Some outside Hopefully, time. Because Boston is still really cold, but I'm hoping. Oh, you're in Boston. Be... Yeah. Oh, but it's uh, it's lobster season. It is. No, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, so in the summer you can get a fresh lobster roll. Oh, they're so okay. good. I didn't know. Wait, when is lobster season? I think it's summer. I don't know. I need to. I don't have my phone. Or there we go. Hey Siri, when is lobster season in Boston? Maine lobster season runs between late June oh. and late December. So I guess it gets started in June. So okay. that's when it's real, like fresh and. Yep, that's when that. they get the first lobsters. Oh wow! I didn't know that. Yeah, you got to get you a lobster roll in uh, like June, July. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, have to. They're so good. Uh, but anyway, okay, awesome job. So you basically you made it. All right, you made yeah. it through the hardest part of didactic. Mm -hmm. There were some ups and downs, and you know you're here. You're smiling. You're excited. So, good job. Thank you. There were some doubts in there, so I'm glad you kind of came through all of that and doubts. you're ready to go. A lot Lots of, of doubts. thinking, what do I do instead now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because when you're you're failing that many exams and you're looking mm -hmm. at possibly being, you know, recycled back to the previous class or not even doing it anymore, there's a lot of catastrophizing that goes on. But that's not where you're at. You're you're making it. You're yeah. halfway through. One more semester yep. of didactic. Yep. Oh my God. You got this. I'm proud of you. You're doing so good. You got this. Thank you. Absolutely. Oh. Anything else you want to say to the audience before we take off here and I go eat breakfast? Mm, that's all. Yeah. Just keep going. Um, don't, even though you feel like giving up in the moment, because I definitely mm -hmm. did every day, always had that thought. Like it goes by so fast too. It's crazy. The weeks go by super mm -hmm. quick and you go exam 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 and by the time you know it you're already at finals week like actually finals week last week uh, of the semester uh and take it one day at a time i took it one hour one day at a time <laughs> and it yep. goes by yep there's light yeah. at the end of the tunnel if you yes. can look at mimi's yeah. vibe right now that's the light you know, if you're down there in the trenches right now, like, I don't know when this is ever going to be over. Look at Mimi right now. She's so happy that it's over. But yeah. if you saw her like two weeks ago, she would have been a different vibe. Yeah. You know, much more stressed, less we'll smiley. But, yeah. Yeah. So we all go through it. You guys aren't alone. That's the main purpose of this video is if you're struggling, you're not alone. Yeah. You know? There's at least one faculty member, one student in your class that, you know, you feel mm -hmm. like you can, or hopefully like you can speak to and then if not go mm -hmm. to counseling it's okay um 100 yep 100 yeah no great job thank you very much for sharing that we're going to keep checking in with mimi as things go on you know maybe after the summer semester she'll be like you lied to me it was actually really hard and then i'll <laughs> be like sorry my bad uh yeah. so <laughs> we'll see but yeah we'll we'll keep following up with mimi I definitely had a lot of emails saying like, thank you so much for sharing her story. I got so much out of it. I don't know if people emailed you because we put your- Yeah, they actually did, uh, a couple did of them. Yeah, and I, yeah. Um, I've i been talking to some of them, helping with their uh, applications, so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so yeah. I'll put her email in this, uh, in the info for this video too, just because it seems like you like connecting with people and like helping I do. them out to write. Yeah, yeah, I, I really like just looking through essays and like reading them mm -hmm. and- you know, helping yeah. them with that. But yeah, like if you need any help or, you know, just someone to talk to about PA school, like, you know, um, Boris will give my contact info and feel free to like email me. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's good to connect with people, especially while you're like, you feel like so low and you're like, this is like really hard. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to explain this exactly, but like having somebody that you can help with what you do already know, like how to get in. It's just like that one little thing that you can feel like you actually know how to do mm. when like the rest of your schooling is making you feel like you don't know what you're doing in any realm of life. Like just being able to help someone just with their essay. It's just like, it's so gratifying. That's why I started this whole thing, you know, four yeah. years later, I'm still doing it just because it is really gratifying. For sure. So yeah. Email Mimi. She'll help you. I will help yeah. you. I'd be happy <laughs> to talk to you. <laughs> All right, Mimi, keep me updated on how things are going. And if you have any questions, any help, you know, we'll be there for you. Yep. 
All right, ending recording now.